welcome to another Loudy Oddcast. We're on the road this week bringing you the story of yet another road trip and rail trip. This time to the mighty show that is Salute, held at the huge Excel Centre in the vast expanse of London's Docklands. Today's Oddcast is slightly different. We're going to be covering the show and hopefully interviewing a few people on the way. But we're not in the Lard Mobile, because we're going by train, which you could probably hear in the background. And I'm here with just one fat lardy, and I can tell by the way the ground is shaking. No, it's not the train, it's Nick. Hello, Nick, what's happening today? Hello, Sid, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Yes, well, the truth is, Sydney, that Salute is our biggest show, and there isn't just room in the Lard Mobile for us all. So I thought we'd change things around a bit. I don't know about you, Sid, but I think it's about time that we were shown the respect that we deserve and recognised our status as war game celebrities and realised that this gives us certain privileges meaning that we can at least travel in style and you know this really is the age of the train and i thought that today we would let the train take the strain and allow you and i to travel in comfort whilst big rich does the old clunk click every trip bit and squeezes into the lardmobile with all the kit how does that grab you well, that sounds excellent. So we're taking the train down to the uh, big smoke while Big Rich heads off in a large mobile with Emma, uh, who's going to be helping out on the stand today. So, uh, sounds like the wargaming version of the tortoise and the hare. <laughs> uh, where the tortoise, I suppose, Nick, is that right? Yes, I think that's right, mate. We are definitely the tortoise, um, for sure. Ah, so here we are. We're on the train, uh, Sydney, your carriage awaits. So, let's take our seats and check in with Big Rich and see how he's getting on, shall we? Sounds like a great idea. Well, here we are. We're, uh, uh, we're in the car, we're in the Lardmobile, heading out on the M25. At the moment, it's six o'clock in the morning. We're, uh, we're just about to jump into McDonald's, I think, to try and grab some breakfast on the move because we left uh, so early that we didn't get a chance to eat anything. I'm here with Emma, it, and we're absolutely squeezed in. Um, I'm, uh, I'm almost spent over double with the amount of stuff that we've got in the car taking down there, so uh, clearly we couldn't take uh, Nick and Sid with us, and they're travelling down separately. Uh, it's going to be hard work when we get there. I'm not too sure what time the lads are going to arrive, but I'm hoping they're going to be there fairly early because there's an awful lot of setting up to do. Um, and uh, some pretty heavy lifting with carrying everything through from the car park. Um, but there we go. We'll, um, we'll see how we get on. Um, it's going to take us about an hour. Um, and the, all the joys of heading into London and trying to find our way through the terrible road system. What I did this morning is I checked out Google Earth because the sat-nav doesn't actually recognise the address of the point that you have to go with deliveries to Salute, which is where we have to go. So uh, I've made a point of checking that out and hopefully got that sorted out, because if so, this will be the first year we haven't got lost. Anyway, that's what I'm doing. Back to the boys. So I'm going to have the smashed avocado and poached egg with sourdough, please, and a skinny latte on the side. And for you, Nick? Um, I'll have the full English, please, and double up on the sausages. Uh, as ever, as ever. So we're here, ladies and gentlemen, back in the wonderful um, surroundings of our breakfast place in St Pancras Station at the booking office. And uh, we're going to enjoy some breakfast here, but talk to you about what we're going to enjoy at the show. So, Nick, what are we looking forward to at the show? Uh, I'm looking forward to breakfast first, Sid, because breakfast with you is always a treat, and you've brought us to a fantastic Location. We're used to eating at McDonald's when we go to shows. Um, <laughs> the only golden arches I can see here really are arches of gold. So um, I'm looking forward to a fantastic breakfast. When we get to the show, what am I looking forward to? I'm going to sound a bit like a crack record here. We're going to see lots of familiar faces and meet lots of friends and have a good catch-up and a good laugh. Uh, we're going to play some Chain of Command. We're taking the Malaya game that Richard has worked so hard on. And looking forward to getting to the show and seeing that he's got that already set up. And I don't need to do anything apart from turn up and look pretty 
which is really your territory, Sid. Well, it's kind of my territory, I suppose, in a way, but certainly standing around talking rubbish with good friends and new friends is kind of my thing, I suppose. But uh, certainly it's always nice going to a show and having the table set up and all the stock brought in already and we don't have to do any of that i'm really looking forward to that so many years we have lugged yeah. those boxes of rules around yeah. we had a for s- no appreciation uh, for no appreciation at all so that is certainly something i'm looking forward to and i'm looking forward to going around and uh, seeing a friends game so mm. uh, dave, dave brown's going to be there i think with uh, general yes, um, general darmay or one of those two and um oh. other and we know that Mike Whitaker is going to be there running his uh, Omaha Beach game for I Ain't Been Shot Mum. I'm very much looking forward to going along and seeing Mike and checking out that game. Always good to check in with Mike. He's a really top bloke and that terrain looked absolutely fantastic. And we think Peach's Backhouse will be making an appearance at some point, which is another great friend of Lart. Yes, absolutely. We, are, we don't think that WSS have a stand as such at Salute this year, but the chaps are going to be there. So we're looking forward to meeting with those. War bases, of course, have been following their their travels south. They've been tweeting photos of their journey, of trashed hotel rooms and, and what have you. So we're looking forward to catching up with them. Oh, yeah, uh, war bases. I mean, they've uh, they've got a really great setup there. We're good friends with Martin and Diane. And also, I think they've got a game which is all for one, which me and Peaches are hoping to have a go wow, at. Splendid. Which I think is presumably musketeer action, swimming from chandeliers and getting drunk with your friends, which mm. kind of describes our life uh, as opposed to a war game. But it, anyway, that, that sounds very good. And I think that Salute is always worth taking the time to wander around and seeing what people are playing what are they enjoying uh, and and what's drawing the crowds and it's quite interesting to see you know, to get some kind of feel for what's going on in the hobby always interested also to see the demographic of people that are there see not lots of people messaging us saying that they're bringing their children to the show so really interested to see how that works out as well today yeah definitely i've really enjoyed the social media warm-up to salute on Twitter, um, sitting in the office and working. It's a nice distraction, really, seeing who's coming, who's getting excited about things. And the demographic is changing, isn't it? You know, we'd come to these shows 10, 15 years ago, and it was basically just blokes like us. <laughs> but now I think there's blokes and girls and you know, kids, all who are coming and enjoying a really great diet. And Salute's always been fantastic for that. It's been a really var- a much more varied demographic than some of the older war games shows, for instance, instance, because I think it's had that fantasy and sci-fi component as a big heart of the show for a very long time, really. Yeah, I, I think that's absolutely true. So it'll be fascinating to go around and see those. Uh, one of the other things, Sid, we need to say as well is that we're going to take a slightly different approach this time to um, our best bit on the bench. We thought we'd look uh, look at that slightly differently this time around so instead of talking about something that is on our bench uh, I thought that we might go around maybe you and I will do this maybe Rich and I maybe you and Rich who knows go around have a look at some of the um, shows that are there some of the stands that are there some of the traders that are there and see what they are offering that might potentially be the best bit on our salute bench mate I think that's always good to be looking at other people's benches and their best bits and Oh, our table is ready for our smashed avocado and poached eggs on toast, so we'll be back shortly with a few more thoughts while we start on our breakfast. See you in a minute. Oh, for God's sake, the bloody road's shut. Emma, can you get on on your phone and try and reprogram for a different route through here? Because this road is shut and it's taking us the wrong way. Okay, looks like we're going to have to do a complete detour around by the Blackwall Tunnel. All right, the joys of driving to Salute are almost endless, having checked it out on Google Earth to find the best route so we don't get lost. We've now found that a road is shut due to roadworks. We've got got to take a completely different route it's going to mean a detour of about four miles through the whole of the blooming east end oh for heaven's sake Mm. cracking poached eggs sydney really good they were really nice weren't they yeah lovely how's your smoothie Uh, the smoothie is very good Mm. there's a strawberry banana and some other baby smoothie it's very Mm. nice Placenta crush, I call which it. I think you tweeted and got yeah. a few votes. Yeah. But it's um, it's very good. The thing about smoothies is that 
They don't always look great, but they normally taste fantastic. That's not my experience with them. <laughs> You've been making I'm, the wrong smoothies, mate. I am, I am for sure. Uh, but uh, uh, very splendid breakfast. You suggested us something nicer for the day. I think so. Nice to have a good relaxed start to the show. I wonder how Rich is getting along. <laughs> Well, here we are, uh, Orange Zone 7. If anybody feels like nicking my car. Um, we just uh, got into the <coughs> got into the venue, <coughs> had five minutes to unload everything, and uh, just dumped everything on tables. Now I'm down parking the car. My wallet is now £20 lighter for the joy of parking for the day, and uh, I'm going to head back up to the hall and get everything set up. It's um, quarter to eight, and I am knackered already. Ah, right, I imagine those other two are having a rather better time of it than me. Let's find out. Ah, the good old London Underground. There's nothing quite like it, is there? No, just a few jumps round to Tower Hill. What are you going to buy today, Sid? I'm not quite sure. Uh, there's a couple of things which have just come out. There's, um, there's one of the booklets called Painting War, which is about painting figures and how to paint them. And they brought one out for the Crusades. Well, the Crusades, probably a period I'd like to do, probably never will do, but I thought that it looked very nice. I've got a couple of the other books in that series. I've really enjoyed looking at those, and it's really colour combinations and ideas, uh, so I may pick up that if, if that's available. Um, Maybe one or two figures might catch the eye. Not really sure. Um, I know a lot of people go and spend the whole budget for, you know, the year sometimes and think it's salute. But uh, more interested in just going around and seeing what's there rather than picking it up. But I've said that many times before, as my friends would know, and I've come back laden with stuff like a Spanish yeah. galleon. <laughs> so it is always possible that I end up with any old tat by the end of the day. We'll just have to wait and see. Well, you always need an additional Spanish galleon. They can't, you know... <laughs> can't go wrong with an extra Spanish galleon. Unfortunately, uh, my wife would think they're not filled with gold so much <laughs> as a lot of old rubbish which would probably be eBayed in a few weeks' time. Know? What does she what know, does she Sydney? Know? Uh, she won't be listening to this podcast. You speak out. <laughs> Say what you think. Oh. And how about... Oh, come to Farringdon. So how about you, Nick? What are you looking for? Uh, I like going to independent, small independent traders at shows uh, because I think the, I already know what the big guys are selling me yeah. and I'm probably going to buy it online and not have to lug it around, to be honest. But I could make some impulse buys, I guess. But I like going to the independents, going to the people whose wares I'm not really very familiar with, having a look at some of the beautiful figures that are in their display cases. That's always seeing, a nice Seeing thing. bits and yeah. pieces that I can add, little bits of terrain items are always a good bet. Um, yeah. But I do, I'm, I'm curious uh, to see if that, um, those type of suppliers are actually at salute, because I don't know that many of the smaller businesses that are operating in the hobby uh, are able to get to Saloon. So I'm keen to go around, see what's there, just buy whatever appeals to me at the moment. And what's the, what do we think the budget is for most people coming to Saloon? Like, sort of 50 quid, 100 quid, 150 quid? I think it varies, doesn't it, really? When... I think it very much varies, yes. Uh, you know, you've got to, in some ways, you've got to remember the investment that it takes for them to get even through the door. That's a really good point. Uh, yeah. And then, what do they spend after that? Who knows? Um, I think, I don't know if people still pre order. Uh, I think people would like to pre order and pick up at shows. Uh, but I do think people like to wander around and have a bit of the buzz of, of getting their goodie bag, don't they? You quite often see people. You know, sharing photos of, of their haul from the various shows, bits and pieces that they've picked the up. Station is I think that's always a fun thing to do at the end of a show, isn't it? Just take a photo of what you've bought and then maybe look at it a year later and see how much has got painted. Uh, I just know that it's one of those things that you get back and you're so excited to get the figures out, get them undercoated. Sometimes that excitement lasts and sometimes it doesn't. That's part of the pleasure of going to a War Games show. I think a part of the fun. Um, so we'll see by the end of the day whether we're laden down with treasure or laden down with tat. This is true. And uh, to be honest, I also think it's quite hard to get away from our own stand. So here's me saying about all the things I'm <laughs> going to buy, whereas I know damn well that actually I'll be chained to our own table for most of the day. So I so won't have much time to go around and spend my own money. Never mind, eh? 
But Never mind, Dave. We've got a very special chain for you later, Nick. But that's uh, that's all part to be revealed later in the day. So while we're moving around to Moorgate, we'll uh, probably see how Rich is doing and say um, goodbye until we're probably on the DLR. Yeah. Well done, Sydney. We made it in through the door. We have. We are in salute. We are in you. All we need to do now is look out for the lard zone. Well, it was supposed to be over by the bins. Yeah, as usual. And Can't hear Richard yet. Position. Oh, that, uh, voice. Not yet heard. Hmm. I feel well, we've got our skinny lattes and we have, um, yeah. a big full fat caramel latte. I wonder Richard. what you're going to say there, Sid. Full fat. We've, we've, we've fallen in with the traitor McKipper, who's joined us, and hopefully we can find our way to see the two fat lardy stand. And uh, I can see in the distance the is. glowing head <laughs> that is Mr. Clark himself. Let's see if we Join can meet up with him. It looks. We're in a very we dapper jacket today. So right at the back left of Salute, we find if we walk for long enough, we will reconnect to the man himself. Bugger off, you useless pair of sods. I've done all the blooming work myself, and you two have been swanning around having blooming breakfast with Quentin Crisp, I suppose. So yeah. you won't want this caramel latte then, Rich. Thank you. We've had a You're very nice forgiven. breakfast. <laughs> so the table's here, we're ready to go, and yeah, I guess fantastic. now we just crack on with the day. Huh, good, well, you enjoy yourself. Why don't you sit back and relax? Let me take the strain from now on. <laughs> Well, I think we'll enjoy a game of tennis, Richard. It's <laughs> OK with you, mate. Hello. So, Nick, hello. Here. hello. You found Ian from Stains Wargamers. Or, Stains? Or Wargamers Stains, as we like to be called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, That's Stains, better, was, in, on, the, on the road signs in Stains, there's an interesting comment about ISIS, I seem to remember. <laughs> something about... That's uh, not us. Don't worry, it's no, not no, us. Okay. It's oh, well, that's good. Okay. That's why he's gone away. Good. So, you haven't come that far, then, to get here, We haven't here, come really. that far. Just up from, uh, up from... Well, I live in Oxford, but yeah. it's a long, long story. But never mind. You haven't yeah. come so far, uh, and we've come here just to see you. And and uh, and you came here, and you said to me, oh, thank you for what a tanker. I really love it. Which is a lovely thing to say. I watched what a tanker last year, and I it's such a laugh yeah. you are kind of the unsung hero he, he grabs all the uh, limelight so well, you're the yeah, hero yeah. we've played that down the club and it's great fun we've played it in 15 this is definitely going to go in the oggers oh, by the way definitely yeah, keep, keep, no. keep talking I like it <laughs> ok well it's Ian Fraser I'll say it again 28 mil's brilliant but 15 mil we love it yeah, it's okay. absolutely fantastic Just what is it about the 15 then do you think is got it's, the winner it's the, it's the size of the games we can put on so when we have like a 5 versus 5 game it's much better. You know, one-on-one, -on -one, two of us playing, it's 28 mils great, but we've actually had five T-34s take on a Tiger and that kind of stuff. It's brilliant. And, yeah. you, and you get the sheer scale to get more scenery on. Oh, yeah. it's, it's great. So you're playing Eastern Front, are you? Or, Eastern or Front and, and Western Front in 28 mil. He's a 28 mil gamer. Okay. He's turning his back on us, but he's a... You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't yeah. like to admit he's it. Busy, so, yeah. He's busy looking at the goodies. So, I know, now, you haven't come here really yes. just to see us, but... You have, here, honestly. Have you? And you and Dave Brown. And Dave Brown. Well, uh, Dave Brown is over there somewhere well, doing, him, and he's told doing me something he's, with Grand Arme. He's told me he's retired as well, which I'm bloody yeah. envious, but he's a copper. Two years work and they can retire, you know? Coppers have always retired, haven't they? The number of retired coppers I know is... Well, they're retiring or retired. Did, one of the two, <laughs> uh, but no, he's, he's got a great game. We played these guys, don't play general army down the club, but that's my yeah. mission in life okay. is to get them to general. Get them to play. So, Absolutely. you're a real lardy, then you're real, you're real, you've got a load of our sets of rules by the sounds. We play, uh, we play sharp practice, we play chain of command, we play ain't been shot, mum. I'm looking at, I've heard Mike Hobbs, yes, uh, talk about bag the hunt, so that's my next project. Hello, okay. Mike, yeah, yeah. Um, and we're thinking of, I, I vaguely suggested these guys this morning, you go around the show, we're going to do lard stains. How about that? <laughs> Do you think that's good? Yeah, I think that large stains is a winner. I think it's a winner. I don't think you? that's definitely fitting and, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and a good note and, to end and on. And appropriate, <laughs> indeed. So there we go. Well, so, look, no. so lovely. Thank you very much for talking to us. Brilliant. Okay, Have thank you. Have a great show. No, great. We and, will uh, enjoy playing loads of lively games. We and will. Fun They're with the superb. You've a real shot in the arm. Well done. Good. Good. Thank you. So okay, now then. We've managed to find, or rather, uh, we've been managed to be sought out by uh, Chuck from the US. That's right, from uh, Detroit, Michigan area. And you come over specially to come to Salute. That's right, this has been on my list of things to do for like the last three or four years, and I figured this is the year. Yeah. So I looked at my wife and I said, I'm going, honey. You coming <laughs> with me or not? She said yes. Well, oh, that's said, a relief. She's not here at the show, but... Okay, what's she doing today? She's going to the Globe Theatre for the tour, maybe the Tate Museum. So yeah. She's found things to do while right. I'm here. 
doing my thing. Okay, so your so your thing is what? You're a two fat lardies gamer, or what's your oh, what's your what are you into? Definitely two fat lardies. Yeah, I have some homebrew stuff of some tanks and things, but definitely you know chain of command. What a tanker is really really popular at the local game store right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks to you guys, I thought I'd do like three tanks. And that'd be enough. And then it went to six tanks, then it went to nine tanks, and I'm up to 23 <laughs> tanks that I've done. Three tanks well. is enough, Chuck, but thank you for going to 23. 23. <laughs> that's what we'd say. I'd, I'd say if you can go to 23, you can yeah. do 30. There's so many favourite <laughs> tanks. Yeah. 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 And Chuck's and an not, American. You need to multi max. And I'm not done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're here today. First salute. You've only been here 10 minutes. What are your initial thoughts on the show? Yeah. Uh, well, again, unlike uh, the American shows that might be three or four days and have more gaming, I mean, this is a trader's delight. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry I, my list isn't longer, but of course I've just started, so yeah. once I walk around a bit, I'm sure I'll find more things to buy. Of course, I'm a gamer, right? Yeah, right. So yeah. You, you, we know you're going to buy some tanks, where you are now, we hope you are. <laughs> so what else is on your list? Uh, just some decals for things, but like not a lot of stuff. I, you know, I, I tried to go over to another dealer for some special dice, but it looks like he, he cancelled out. Right, um, okay. And if the guys from Customs and Imports are listening, it's nothing for you to worry about. It's all legitimate stuff. And if I, well, look, we hope you have a lovely day. Yep, really, you. really appreciate you came over to us first well, and said hello. It's good to be here. I, and I've seen Richard a couple of times when he came to America, but it's good to meet you, Nick, and Sydney. And you know, I've been following the blog and seeing what you guys are eating and drinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow. yes. Yeah, and and that's, a good, that's a good point that's to a good leave it on. So start. enjoy the rest of the show oh, and, and, and have a safe journey back yep, to the States. Have a good show, too. Thank you, Chuck. Thank Look you. forward to speaking to you again. Next salute, maybe. Who knows? Excellent. Wallander and uh, snow. That's all I'm going to talk about. Yeah. So we're Nothing talking about else. we're talking about things with a Scandinavian aspect. Why would that be, Sydney? Why would uh, that be? Sorry, that's because we're talking to Per from Roller One at Salute 2019. Per. I was taking the mickey out of you for being Swedish, and I feel really embarrassed now. Would you like to hit I him? I love Sweden, yeah. and I love no, Sweden. No, 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 not at all. We, we switch. We, we, we're always on the fence, you know, in, in all this kind of diplomatic stuff, etc. So I'm not going to hit anyone today, really, I plan to do. I'm half finished, though, and it's a little bit that's how I kind of got into wargaming, because I have an interest, because a lot of relatives used to fight in the, in the Finnish Winter War and the Continuation War, yeah? And as a Swede, you always were brought up a little bit in this kind of hinterland where... You're not sure really what Sweden's role were in the Second World War. You know, were, were we kind of helping the Germans, or were we, you know, by letting them get their iron ore, etc., and getting through, etc. So, yeah. in Sweden, the kind of whole war gaming industry has been a little bit, not industry, but sorry, the, the war game wasn't that popular when I grew up. You know, there, there were not many war games clubs, etc. It's a little bit kind of much smaller than it was here, but there's a little bit of a renaissance there in the last few years. The war gaming has kind of grown and it's been much bigger. RPG was big in Sweden though, and you can see now modern RPG yeah. is a lot of yeah. Swedish products out there, so RPG always been kind of that stronger element. So for me, Wargame is about telling those stories that RPGs are great at, so that's why I'm kind of approaching my Wargaming about Swedish stuff on that kind of aspect. So I try to, for example, I'm doing Poltava now, and for me, Poltava is very much about telling the story about the battle surrounding. It's not just rounding up the two lines, you know, and then bash them together, but the things that happens on the on the fringes of that, you know, the city itself and so on. So, but I'm I'm great here today because we have a big story here being told on this uh, table from the two fat lardies as well. So, there you go. There you get your free ad as well. Free ad yeah. as well. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. But so, so, if you if you're a war gamer yeah. and you're into Swedish military, yeah. What salute got to offer you then? What's okay. that for you? Oh, well, what, what it has for it, for example, Bacchus 6mm, the best range in Great Northern War, not just because I'm using that. We also have Lützen over there, uh, a battle, but again, very much uh, uh, lined them up, so to speak. It doesn't tell the story, for example, like uh, Sydney did yeah. in his Lützen, which is kind of a big, maneuverable thing. But otherwise, I mean, the thing is like this, that a lot of the equipment that we use, so you can use Italians for Swedes, for example, I've done that in 15mm. Uh, you can use a lot of stuff for the kind of finish, etc., and, and so on. So there's, there's a lot. There's a lot of hidden Scandinavian gems in here. And one of the most um, 
so obviously a big fan of your of your Twitter feed, uh, good friend. But one of the things which I thought was really exciting was that when you and a couple of other people were talking about an old historical game which was based on Sweden in 1943, yeah, yeah, and yeah. there was a lot of research which has been done there, which is really interesting. So people were using modern maps, 1940s maps, and also Google Earth images yeah. to create the. Um, environment for a campaign based on what would have happened if the Nazis had invaded Sweden. Correct, and that's yeah. exactly the sort of exciting sort of alt historical it could have happened but didn't, which I thought was really interesting because there's endless numbers of scenarios like that which are really plausible that didn't happen but could. And what really impressed me was that the people who were in that particular Twitter thread had researched what forces were available at that particular Correct, time. Yeah. And yeah. there was a political crisis, which I had no idea was happening in Sweden at that time. And that was all brought out by Per and Per's friends' uh, posts on Twitter. So it was a really, really excellent series it, of it, posts. It's back to this thing where, you know, there was a balancing act with the, with, with the whole thing. And, and, and also for that, we actually already have written a two, two page of, of a pun sites campaign called uh, Operation uh, Dalek Holly and Bolt, which is the symbol of the uh, Dollar Regiment. So the first battle of the 1943 campaign that we're working on will happen in the county where I was born because it was one of the routes that the Germans were taking in. Not the most exciting because it's more, there would have been a mechanized infantry more or less, but it's a good start for us to kind of gear up before we do any more kind of panzer attacks, etc. So it, we believe a very much similar situation like 1940. So I think we probably use some of the two fat uh, a lot of stuff from the sorry from the chain of command 1940 book you know in terms of how yeah. forces work and with this kind of invasion waves that that's actually talking about so so but that's probably easter at some point in the future yeah yeah and you brought your lad with you today so what's yeah. he been doing well okay so he's been he, he played custer in a uh, battle of uh, big horn which were war games calculator doing uh, and uh, he almost got into the to, to take the village with the, the children uh, and, and the ladies, which were the kind of pastor's idea. I have one unit left, and Dan made me surrender. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm, teaching, I'm teaching the little one a little bit this gentlemanship where you are in a I war game surrender. show that you do not play until you only have one guy <laughs> left. A certain, so yeah, we say, yeah. I probably lost it. Yeah, you know, yeah. nothing that's yeah. 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 So there we so go. So there's loads for him to do, though. Loads, loads yeah, also Space Wix and are here today doing an alternative scenario where some. SS forces are fighting Germans and Americans together. There was an incident where some German commander decided that we're going to make a decision here, free some French prisoners, perhaps thinking about his career after the war. It's actually a fight, Americans, uh, Germans against SS. And uh, that's the little one was doing that. And successfully, together with Josh, uh, uh, Neil Schuck's son, yeah. they, they managed to out with the SS, so that's quite well done. And, and I can't let you go without you telling us a little bit about your shirt. It's possibly the uh, most floral shirt at the show. Absolutely. You tell yeah. us it's your war game shirt. It's, it's, how would you describe it, Sydney? You're more artistic than I am. It's a sort of paisley pattern, but with a modern twist, really. Um, probably Purr's 2019 spring collection. Very, very fetching it is too, sir. It is. It's actually my 2018. I had this on Joya 6 yeah. last year, and in absolute success it did, yeah? I'm coming to this point where I'm getting a little bit older, and I'm, my scalp gets a little bit irritated and so on, and I can no longer wear this kind of black metal T-shirt without looking a little bit like it's been snowing in my back. So I try to alternate with a little bit of less colourful alternatives. It's definitely working well, for you there, say it looks splendid. The pair of you, you with your nice blue shirt, Sydney with his red trousers uh, it really is what salute's all about lovely to talk to you and thanks, thanks, for, thanks, for, yeah, thank thanks you. for sharing those views well <laughs> well here we are we're in salute it's getting late in the day and i'm getting bored so i thought i'd talk to a well-known internet celebrity big lee uh <laughs> host is rejects is it <laughs> yes all right so how's your day been today very good lee, really Spent what far too much have you what you bought what's, what's uh, the what's the best bit in the bag that you bought today? Well, it's not in the bag anymore. I've had to take it to the car. It was so much lead, it was giving me curvature <laughs> of the spine. Um, uh, a classical Indian army from Bacchus. Wow. Um, about 150 quid's worth of lead there and um, yeah, yeah. a lot of painting ahead of me. Classical. So, what's that? Uh, Cello? Violin? <laughs> <laughs> well, the other army that I've yet to buy is Alexander's one to fight. Right. So, uh, 
Yes. Brilliant. This is for the Analog Painting Challenge next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next year. Right. No, yeah. That's interesting. I always keep thinking I should be getting involved in the analog. There's a man who'd like to give us some money. Hello. <laughs> um, I always think I should take part in the Analog Painting Challenge. We have a Lardy Painting Challenge, which I've barely ever submitted anything to that. So <laughs> it's highly unlikely that I'd submit anything to that. So what's, what struck you about the show today? What have you thought? It's getting late in the day. You've had the time to have a look round. I've liked the games <laughs> yeah. because there's less of these big set piece eye candy ones, more mm. the sort of terrain that you'd use in a game in your club. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. There's some stuff there, you know, it's, it's down a notch, but I like it because yeah. it's more realistic, it's more achievable. Yeah, um, well, I think that's an interesting point, actually. I mean, funnily enough, what we've done with our game is we're using terrain that we use in the club. It's just a couple of cloths chucked on the table, and the terrain which I, you know, show people on the blog about building is just something I think. You've got to do it so it's achievable for everybody. And the reason for that is that I can't achieve anything that isn't achievable for everybody. It's, well, it's nice to see a game and go, mm, we could do that. You know, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. We've got the terrain to do that, or with a little bit of work, we can make, we can make it. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what has struck me today, and which I think is really, really positive, is I've noticed a huge number of young people here. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that we're old, <laughs> but you are. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not, obviously. A numerically significant <laughs> birthday, which I won't mention. Um, <laughs> 21. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but there has been a lot of younger people here yeah. today, yeah. and I think when people talk about the hobby is growing, I've been gobsmacked by the number of young kids, but also the number of blokes girls in their 20s who were here having a good time yeah. and all that growing stuff is i think the technical term is bollocks well, my own daughter 23 mm. was around here somewhere at one point right she's disappeared now right she's a role player but you know she was mm. here for the models and the dice and uh, right. went home with a suitable mm. bag so yeah i mean yeah. it seems to be uh, well we all like models mate Yep. But, well, she can't help it. She's grown up in my, my house. So. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, lovely to see you. Always nice to see celebrities. Uh... I've got a question for Lee. Oh, it's right, it's right. actually from Sid. All right. He uh, wants to know why you're called Big Lee. Well, <laughs> it might have something to do with my rotund shape. Oh, all <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Okay, that's good. Oh, well, that might disappoint Sid. We're but, all relieved yeah, about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Look. Put it this way, when we're in the shed of war, yeah. post his shed, yeah. we have to even ourselves out because the shed would collapse if we all stood on one side. <laughs> <laughs> well, lovely to see you and uh, great talking to you. And uh, you can listen out for yourself on the Oddcast. I'll, be, I'll make sure I laugh at it. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, mate. Now then, I've stumbled into Martin from Warbases, who's here with his Three Musketeers game. Uh, Martin, just tell us what it is we're looking at. What we're doing here today is we're just having a little play test of our game. Um, it's, it's called All for One. Yeah. And we're, we're developing this um, in order to be able to release this, hopefully sometime soon. Um, now, what's happening today is that uh, Queen Anna has given the Musketeers a letter that she wants them to deliver to the Duke of Buckingham. And the Cardinal has got wind of this. Yeah. And um, he sent a squad of Red Guard to intercept this letter in order to be able to blackmail the Queen. And we know what, do you know what's in the letter? Something indiscreet, probably. Probably something, something fruity. Something she wouldn't want to Absolutely, be known. Absolutely, I would think so. I would, right. I would almost definitely think so. So it's got to be guarded very carefully, and the uh, Musketeers are meant to do that. Absolutely. So Absolutely. this is a one figure represents one figure. Yeah. Uh, small, we've got the, the, the table here is what, two foot it's, square? It's a two foot square table, and we've got a dog leg shaped street that the Musketeers are going to fight their way down in order to be able to throw the letter over the wall at the residence of the Duke of Buckingham. Right, OK. Now, I understand that our own Sydney is hopefully going to come and play this with you later. Um, and he, of course, is well known for his ability to get over ladies' fences and <laughs> deliver his letters. Uh, so I'm sure he'll do really well at it. But you must make sure that he fails miserably. Absolutely. We'll Good. try our utmost to, suit, to ensure that, that, that the car Cardinal gets his letter. So the rules you're using for this are your own homegrown rules? Our own homegrown rules set developed by Anthony Spencer and Sam Catterall and they, they've done a wonderful job of, of creating the atmosphere of the heroic sort of um, sup, almost superhero type thing yeah um, but while I'm saying that can I just assure you that the musketeers don't win every time <laughs> uh, they I'll, do not <laughs> no okay and, and of course the table looks fantastic lots of war bases bits and pieces I see uh, of course festooning the tabletop as they should and they looks, it looks fantastic so, well, 
best of luck with it today. You're obviously here with the rest of the guys. You've had a journey down from Scotland, a long journey down from Scotland that I've been following on Twitter. Yep. I've seen a photograph of your breakfast. That's right, yep. So that, 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 that was good. So that set us up for the day. I'll just um, set you up for the week, I would have thought. <laughs> I thought so, yeah. Um, and that's, that's good speaking to you, Nick. And yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a great day. Well, here we are. It's towards the end of the show, and I'm here still towards with... Still the end of the show. Still, yeah, I'm here with Dave Brown, known in many ways as the godfather of wargaming, which is interesting, actually, because your namesake, James Brown, was known as the godfather of soul. What are, fish would you like to be associated with? We, we are related. <laughs> <laughs> so which fish? He's soul... Uh, cod. Cod. The cod. godfather cod. of cod. cod. The codfather. Codfather, that, exactly. That would be good. Right, well, codfather, Thank tell you. us about your game today. You've been running, uh, what was it, a General what, Darmé? What we've put on today is a General Darmé game at the right. Battle of Ligny uh, in 1815. Mm. Uh, Ligny, is that the French pronunciation? I believe it is, right, yes. Exactly. Uh, I like yeah. to be, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a particular sucker for the correct pronunciation. Yeah, absolutely, good. And, uh, so, uh, what we've gone for, we've recreated the, the village pretty much in its almost in its entirety yeah and uh, we've we've pitted gerard's uh, division plus mm. extras against the uh, the prussians and, and blucher's reserves and who won fortunately the french guard broke through on the very last turn wow. which was a perfect ending to the battle wow. Wow. <laughs> so this is in extra time really <laughs> yes that's yeah, it. they scraped the last goal yeah. in the last 15 minutes. the boys done good <laughs> yes they've done yeah. very well good well that's good to hear well and lots of happy smiling faces yes we decided to uh, run this year it was a demonstration and participation right. game right so we had literally tons of people come in yeah. take a division take a brigade yeah uh, get involved in the game and mm. crack on. So most right. of the time I've just sat at the side just watching and let them get on with it. So yeah. it's been great. Yeah. I must admit I've skived as well today <laughs> where possible. I was so exhausted from the initial setup without anybody to help me. Um, oh, here's Nick and Sid. All right, how's the champagne, boys? You still on that? Uh, absolutely. It's a very, very good vintage. Hello, Dave. Hi. Good yeah. to see you again, sir. All right, fine. Nicholas, what are you, were you on the verb clique? Uh, I, was, I was on the mocha. We were, we, were, we were very alcohol-free, weren't we, Sid, really? We were. We had Say a smoothie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, that is so you, Sid. And on that bombshell, we will go back to the studio. Or somewhere. <laughs> I'll be up for that, but uh, something will be okay. So, is that your activation done? They're still moving, Japanese are moving up through the bamboo. Japanese moving up through the jungle now, so they should be in the tree line soon. That tank looks a rather attractive target, doesn't it? From that two pounder, yeah. Okay, so I'm here with uh, George Howard. George Howard, where are you from, George? Uh, I live in Guildford. In, Do you? you know, darkest Surrey. Darkest Surrey, <laughs> darkest, deepest Surrey. Yeah. And you've been allowed, you've got a visa to come yes, to. Yes, I have. Yeah, here. she's gone to the gym and she's with her parents all day. So. Uh, oh, okay, uh, right now, yeah. and, and I've I've found you. Uh, sneaking around by the two fat lardies <laughs> stand. Yes. yes. Uh, what is it that drew you over here? Uh, well, um, I, I bought sharp practice first of all. Yeah. And then uh, and then I bought um, chain of command. Yeah. And uh, just just the books to have a look because I haven't played a war game in about ten years. So I, really, I, I think an advert or a post popped you up. You don't on my look Instagram. like a war gamer. Actually, you're much too smart to be a war gamer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, it popped up on my Instagram. I thought, oh, that looks quite good fun. Yeah. And yeah. I saw the videos on YouTube and stuff like that. Okay. Thought, yeah. So uh, yeah. And then, now I'm getting back into it. And now I'm here at Salute and, and seeing you chaps. And yeah. Yeah. It's, and now you're on the Oddcast. Now I'm on the Oddcast. So, so whatever yeah. next, you'll be Hollywood and international oh, stardom yeah. <laughs> will await you. And Sydney will be here in a minute to snap you up. I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, so, you, what else are you looking at today? Uh, I just, well, you know, as I said, I haven't done a war game in a while, so I'm just having a look round and, you know, I, I got some money. I'm quite, quite liking the look of these battle map things and yeah. stuff like that, and, but, you know, space and things like that is, is, a, is an issue. And when was the that. last time you came to Salute? About 15 years ago. And what are you making of it today? It's not how I remember it, but it's, it's a lot busier. 
Yeah. Then, then there's loads of people here. I got here bang on ten, and there was loads of people. But now it's just it's just rammed. Yes. It's, yeah. I know. It's, it's it's a busy old show. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, and you've got in your hand, you've got a copy of Water Tanker. I have. But you haven't bought it yet, but you might. I, I'm, I'm. You might. Being you on the odd not. cast might have persuaded me, really. Ah, right, OK. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I'm sure you'll uh, make a wise investment. And I you think can I play will. it with your, with your girlfriend, yeah. your friends, yeah. people you don't know, people you don't want to know, That's people great. you'll never meet again. I love that game. And there, there you go, see, there we, we, we go. we've got... Um, it's, 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 it's good Highly fun. Highly recommend it. Highly recommended, says there we go. Says our friend. Right, so listen, lovely to talk to you. Yes. Enjoy your show. Thank you. And if you if you buy those rules, uh, I hope you enjoy that game uh, yeah, too. Yeah. And to listen see you for again. yourself on the old I, I'm going to. Now. I'll make sure we won't edit you out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we're back at Salute, and we have been walking round the various stalls and games with a view to finding the best bit on the bench. I think I found it, Sid. I think we've just been looking at some rather nice uh, Seven Years War and Horse and Musket figures that are produced by a, a, a new business to me. I didn't know, Cran Tara Miniatures. And they're really nice. The proprietor, Mr Graham Cummings, yeah. uh, really spent a lot of time with us chatting about the range. And it is a fantastic looking range of Jacobite Rebellion, Seven Years War figures. And you've bought some, you bought well, some pack I've, mules I've bought there. some pack mules because um, pack mules, I mean, these are, these are, I guess, aimed at Seven Years War. But funnily enough, I think mules... Uh, can be used in a broader period than that. So I'm looking to use these in the pony. We've got a pack here, uh, four very nice, well cast metal mules with um, I don't know what you call it, stowage uh, to the, go on top of the, of, of the donkeys. The 18th century equivalent of stowage. So yeah. we've got some barrels, we've got some um, uh, sort of bag, boxes of rifles or boxes of muskets I suppose in that period yeah. some uniforms all sorts yeah. of stuff that you can place on the mule train but talking to Graham this is part of a growing range uh, and he's got some lovely things in there one of the things that I really liked about what I saw there was that he's got seven years war hussars and he's got dismounted hussars with horse holders and I want to see more dismounted hussars in the hobby there's more games we can play around cavalry actions and actually worth getting your hands on those if you're in the Seven Years War. Really nice, quite tall figures probably for 28 mil, quite quite, um, quite Accurate, slim. Accurately proportioned. Accurately proportioned, say. yeah. Classically designed was the words that the uh, the owner used and I'd go ahead, with, I'd go agree with that. Yeah, I think that they, they look lovely and they seem to have painted it really well and as you said Nick, you know, they've got the dismounted equivalent of the cavalry, which for skirmish games or large skirmishes you really need to be able to dismount the cavalry certainly like Dragoons or Hussars who are playing a scouting reconnaissance role. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So I, I should be going back for more. So this is Cran Tara, C-R-A-N-N, Tara, T-A-R-A, Miniatures. Uh, and, yeah, I think it's definitely one to look out for, crantaraminiatures.co.uk gets can... my vote for best bit on the salute bench. Well, Sydney, here we are. Peace at last after a long day. Uh, it's many, many hours ago since we first met up and had our breakfast at St Pancras. Many hours? I thought it was about three days. It's been <laughs> a very long day, hasn't it? A good day, but a very long day. So we've been round Salute. We've seen loads of people, seen friends, old, met new people. Um, seen some fantastic games as well. And it's been a very good salute show, I think. One you of think, the best you think ones. You think turnout well attended, would you say? I thought it was really busy all day. I thought there were lots of crowds, people moving around, uh, and definitely some of the trading stands. It was just impossible to get near until about three o'clock in the afternoon. So a very busy show and some really good quality games there. And every game that we went up to look at, you know, people were very interested in sort of coming and talking to us, explaining the game, not knowing who on earth I was, or maybe not even Surely knowing they're... who you were. Uh, do those people exist don't know who you are? <laughs> so really good, <laughs> really good day, and we saw a very good best bit on the bench, and uh, hmm. really enjoyed the games that we participated in. And a big shout out to the War Bases game of All for One, which we played with Peach's Backhouse and uh, Robert, his son. And a really good game of that. Very good, simple mechanics, but lots of fun. So very much looking forward to Martin bringing that to the market at some point in 2019. And there's some lovely figures that go with that. Some of those, um, you know, what do they call the Musketeers and Red Guard. They just look not... I mean, I, I'm going to get myself some of those for sure. Yeah, they were, it's a really 
nice range which has been produced. I think it's leaning heavily mm. on the BBC series of the Musketeers, which was lots of fun. Um, but the figures really do look good once they've been painted up, and Martin had done a great job with those. Um, and there's also other figures which are available, which people probably already have. So it's a, another great small skirmish game, and I think you know you and me were thinking about doing something like that maybe for a Christmas game Who yeah knows? absolutely yeah and, and I thought actually my reflections on walking around the show are that historical games seem to be really well represented actually you know I've, sometimes there seems to be a very heavy science fiction bias and I always think rightly or wrongly my it's my view that actually at um at salute I think you tend to see more science fiction type games but really today I did notice a lot of historical games uh and yeah, people were really engaging and willing to speak to you about their games and just seemed to be um, having a good day out. What was interesting from the trading perspective, I, I thought, was that, uh, you know, you do see the big names, don't you? You do see the big names taking up lots of floor space and selling and selling lots of toys, it must be said. But, I, you know, I would like to see more independent small traders get their space at salute and not be crowded out by some of those bigger names I think it's really important that those small businesses get their products out they're the ones that create the innovation and, and they're the bits that i want to buy I, I don't i don't necessarily want to buy from the big names because i know that i can get those online I want, I want to be tickled on the day and that normally comes from something i haven't seen before so for me um when we said about what are they call cran tara yep. now That's somehow they were new to me and yet everybody i've spoken to since has heard of them but i hadn't heard of them so um, it was really lovely to see them, and uh, for them to be the best bit on the bench was great. Uh, yeah, so I'm tired now, I'm hungry. I wonder how Richard's been getting on, though. Yeah, let's see. Rich, are you out there? How are you getting on? Oh, sorry, just finishing a cheese roll. I've been starving all day. I literally haven't had a chance for anything to eat since breakfast. So as we uh, head out of London on the M11, um, a chance really to reflect on on a day obviously completely knackering um, unless you've stood up all day on the solid concrete floor at Salute you don't know what it is to have that sort of sheer exhaustion and strain especially if you've got a few more pounds in bulk than you should be carrying um, so that the um, that as I think I said this morning it's a bittersweet experience Salute it's a uh, there's great bits and there are other bits that are really quite exhausting but that is not to complain in any way uh, had a great day I bought some dice which I wanted to get um, and that was it uh, I didn't have a chance to look round I didn't get a chance to really see any of the um, any of the other games any of the other stands I looked in on um, Mike Whitaker's uh, bloody Omaha game with Ivy Shopman which was fantastic uh, full marks to the guys at Peterborough War Games Club for that superb terrain um, where you've got WN62 up on the headlands and the, the Yanks trying to get off the beach uh, to fight their way through the defences that is an incredibly bloody but uh, an incredibly poignant uh, game um, which he reminded me I wrote the scenario for but I must admit I'd completely forgotten that um, but that was great to see. Dave Brown's Linny game, or Ligny, as uh, Dave likes to call it, being a Londoner, uh, was uh, was beautiful. Um, in fact, the, the terrain was uh, absolutely incredible. Beautiful, beautiful uh, French village that um, that almost looked like it could have been some kind of um, uh, one of those Christmas villages you see covered in. Uh, twinkling lights and snow at Christmas time it really was a, a beautiful model um, but other than that I never, just really didn't get a chance to to see anything at all uh, I was very hopeful of having a chance to go around and maybe pick up a few figures or even just a few paintbrushes and I heard there were some great deals to be had a friend of ours Robert Avery uh, who is well known for his uh, uh, I mean shop mum scenario books and army lists picked up I think it was a, a, something like 20 paintbrushes for 20 quid, um, which uh, for any uh, any war gamer is just a great buy. Um, one of the things I was really pleased about was that I got to meet uh, Mel, the terrain tutor. Um, I don't know whether you've uh, seen his videos on YouTube, but it's something I 
stumbled into about three months ago um, when the traitor McKipper said to me about this guy making terrain uh, online. Really fabulous, really enjoyed um, watching that. It's the type of thing that's really good for me to listen to while I'm actually making terrain, even if he's making a completely different, different piece of terrain to what I'm doing. Some of those videos on there are really, really worth checking out. Um, there's a great one on there which talks about uh, uh, acrylic paints and different types of paints, thinners, so on and so forth, and talks about it in, um, in an almost a kind of microchemistry lesson, a very, very uh, understandable level, and that's uh, coming from me who got an ungraded in chemistry O level, so th this, is, uh, this is not high science, but it's certainly interesting enough that it you know, really informed me about the use of paints and how to use paints to get the best from them. Um, so, I would certainly recommend uh, checking out uh, Mel, the, the Terrain Tutor, if you go, I think he's got a Facebook page, the Terrain Tutor, and have a look on uh, YouTube. He's also got a Kickstarter going at the moment for a book, which I believe at this moment in time has, has raised over $120,000 and has achieved some great stretch goals, which mean that new and different chapters are going to be included uh, in there. So uh, check that out as well. But I got a chance to meet him, and um, really flatteringly, he was um, taking some photos of my jungle terrain and saying how much he liked it. So uh, I'm obviously uh, suitably chuffed that uh, a guy who's got uh, such a fabulous track record in making uh, models professionally was pleased and impressed with uh, with what I'd done with that. So that was um, that was a real highlight. Uh, and uh, of course, we had a great day running, um, running a big chain of command, um, where uh, I think the Japanese won both times. I must admit, I was awfully involved in the afternoon game because, to be honest with you, I was running out of batteries by then. Um, but I did uh, get a, an opportunity to speak to so many people. It was great to see Chuck Shelty come over from the United States of America. It's always really good to see. Uh, people who made that effort to, to come so far and to come and see us and just fabulous to talk to people who were telling us how much they were enjoying the rules and enjoying the being part of the LARD community because I think this again coming back to something I've said before is one of the fabulous things about being able to do um, uh, being able to do the um, sorry just come up to a roundabout now being able to do the the oddcast and being able to do the social media stuff is the uh, the real pleasure of um, uh, you know being able to make contact with people and uh, just have have that uh, extension of uh, the whole two fat lardest thing. So it, it becomes one great big global community, and it's great to meet those people who you've been talking to for uh, for a long time uh, online. Um, so that's kind of my salute. I'm feeling like a few beers might be in order now, uh, just to uh, round the day off. But we'll uh, we'll get home, and I think uh, Emma, who's uh, been busy all day, is going to be dropping me off in St Albans, and we're going to be meeting up with a few of the guys and uh, having a few beers. So that's it for another oddcast. We've had a fantastic day here at Salute. I hope you've enjoyed listening to the various interviews and discussions that we've had with people at the show. And I think there's one last thing that we have to do, and that's to say, well, for me, uh, thank you very much, Nick and Richard, again, for being my guests here on the Two Fat Ladies Oddcast. And we have to hand over to his very special post-salute. Sound off by Roger Barraclough and his band. Good night, legend Good night, ladies and gentlemen. That's easy for you to say. <laughs> In tonight's show, Sydney Roundwood was joined by Nick Skinner and Richard Clark with music by Roger Barraclough and his band.